before I left, if I bring my rod tip in here, now I'm not going to track straight. So I have to tilt it slightly over to the side, so the rod tip is over the line. The next bit is really interesting, because once you set it up, and sometimes I'll reach back to get more line in the dealer. The next bit is how you begin this casting stroke. I think it's key to making a good effective roll cast. And that's to start this roll cast with one of the terms you've already used, drag. Okay? So I'm going to drag the rod forward with no translate, with no rotation, get to the end, and then rotate. Okay? As opposed to rotating through the casting stroke, which ends up putting a bit of slack line there at the end, which is a useful cast if you're fishing downstream or in a cross. <laughs> so, anyway, so here I am, what's here, and drag forward, come forward, come forward, and then a little flip, and then come down. Now a lot of people say you can't roll cast over grass, well you can if you've got drag for that first part. So drag, 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 and of course, a, one of the rules to roll casting is you've always got to keep the, the D loop downwind of you for safety. So I've got a wind onto the right shoulder, I have to bring the line over this side, reach back a little bit, my back, drag forward, flick at the end. Okay, so that's nice and simple, I'm sure you can all do that, right? Okay. Um, right, so let's move on from that. So that's a nice basic roll cast. A bit limited, so that to make this cast more efficient, we want to get more line in the dealer. So, one way we could do it, when you first teach somebody, is you put the line behind you, you're in this position here, then you have to put the handle here. You could take a couple of steps forward, put a little more line behind you. <coughs> Not very practical. So, better what we can do is we can flick some line behind it. So, then we're introducing the switch cast or the dynamic roll, or the jump roll, all the same thing as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to lift the rod tip up. I'm going to show you this. So you're going to lift the rod tip up here. I'm going to come around. And I'm going to come up with a little flip. The idea is to put more line behind me. So that's a move. Up, round, up. More line behind me. Now, with this cast, I tend to put the line a little bit further away from me, maybe a little bit. And I look where I want to place the anchor. So I'm looking at Sean's shadow of his head there. That's a big target. It's kind of like the first half of the Belgian. This is the other way of doing it. This is the other way of getting it. Okay? So I'll just do this a couple of times. So I come up, around, up, a little bit of power upwards, forwards. So another way of getting there, and I was, uh, I saw that in uh, Way In, Spade uh, Z, where he started off with a Belgian cast, which is a horizontal back cast, followed by a vertical overhead cast, and then come around, and then he would drop, underpower his back cast, and go from there. And that's how it works too. That's another way of getting around the same problem. Uh, but I think this, to begin with, is a, is a slightly um, more effective way of teaching, because it gets that rod coming around and then poke, poking the rod tip up to allow that loop to come through. And that is, instead of coming forward and just stopping the rod, is to come forward and pull backwards a little bit. Okay? They've come across that on sex loops over the years. It's called the whiplash. Rotate, and after it's rotated, just pop that and pop the tip back. Yeah, I'm not putting the power in as I go forward. I'm shocking the rod. Do you remember how we had that line Bounce, eh? Without the line on it. So there's a little... So a little flip there right at the end. Bounce it. Bounce the rod. It. Bouncing the rod. Yep. So you can pull here from this position here and forward to flip. Yep. So if you want to get a tight loop in your CI test, that's how to do it. So there's my tight loop by shocking the rod. Can you do it? Uh, Paul, what are the what are the potential problems then with the, that dynamic roll setting up that way? What are you looking for that could go wrong? I'm missing the anchor. Right. Okay, so coming back too much power, blowing the anchor. That would be your number one problem. Coming, coming down and putting too much line on the water, difficult to get that off again. Which is why this movement should come upwards a little bit to put that line in the air. Yeah. 
obviously waiting too long in that case. Okay? So the idea is, all that line's alive, just the end of the line kisses, and it'll be full of grass. And are you looking where you're putting it? Sorry? Are you looking where you want the fly to land? Absolutely. Absolutely. Wherever I look, that fly goes, mostly. That's the way I do it. Okay. Are you using the fly as the end catch? Yeah, and maybe a couple of feet away. Um, I know another guy who watches the end of the line. And that works for him to bring it back. But I reckon that line's going to come off. I'm happy to look there. It's going to be just a, I'm happy to look there. It goes there. So left. And then, and then go to the right. Now when I do this over water, so when I do this over water, I've changed, I've changed my back pass from being a lift, hang on, so a lift along and up, which is how I first did it. When I do now, I'm going to do, I'm going to use more speed. And because I'm using more speed, I'm going to blow that angle if I don't come downwards. So my approach is to come up, down speed, and then up. Just, and what actually happens over the water is you get two feet of line here and the rest just sort of sits just in the air above it and you should have this nice dynamic V loop. Yep. But that comes from making from the speed in the back cast. But if I come upwards, I put the speed in, just miss the anchor completely, so I have to come down a little bit. The danger is you can't, you can't make a double haul because you're going to, then you're going to introduce slack. Um, but for me, I get, I get a better cast if I just pop the rod tip back and then I keep the ball here and then I can pull through the ball and cast. Uh -huh. um, anything else about that? Do you want me to cover some of that again? Oh, yeah. couple of, I want to cover the key points again. So, get the dynamic roll now, okay? Key point, you lift the line off the water, you're then going to bring up the rod tip back almost horizontally and then there's a little flick upwards and it's that flick upwards that, that allows the line to come through wherever I look is where the line goes it should be okay. <coughs> whatever angle I need to say this is in a different way now whatever angle I come back in on is the same angle I have to go out on so if my line is here half rod loop out to the side my rod is tilted about 45 degrees and my angle in, angle out of it 45 degrees. The more further over I go, which is more how I do that cast, the more angled out this rod has to be, and I have to come out at that same angle. Okay? I can't come out at this angle and then come in on this angle, because that's going to give me a tracking error. Okay? So angle in each angle out. The key is to lead with the rod butt, and the best thing you can do, I think, in this cast is just to Bounce the rod right from the side. Just bounce the rod right from the straight. So come forward here. When, when would you use it, Paul? Like, why learn a dynamic or a switch cast? Well, because if you've got limited back space. Right. But, you have to, but it's not so limited that you can't get a little bit of line back. Yep. But it's limited that you can't get all of your line back, right? Yep. So if you can get, I don't know. So many opportunities where, you can, where you've got maybe 30 feet of back cast, and you can throw 80, 80 feet of good forward cut here. And it's very quick too. Yep. Like especially when you start to have change in direction, you know, like this fact that you can do spay casting as well, which is all the same thing. It's like, a, it's like a purely just spay casting because that single spay, right like here, and then there's a bone fish over there. Yeah. Sean sure mentioned another good one earlier in um, cycling. I think the question would be, why would I use a roll cast when I can use, when I can use a dynamic roll cast? Yeah. There's, no, there's no need for a standard roll cast. No. I think the, the reason we teach the roll cast is just to get something to do in there. But what we really do when we're fishing is like, you know, we always double haul most of the time, but it's more efficient. But this is a more efficient roll cast. 